of world records for telling jokes for 24 hours and five minutes, which he's going to do again tonight. So I hope everybody had dinner because you're going to be here for a while. He's a magician. He's funny. He makes things happen. Two people disappeared in the audience last night. And we don't know where the hell they are. But anyway, how about a nice round of applause for Bob Carroll? Let's hear it for him. Bob. Thank you very much. We hope that you'll enjoy the show. My name is Bob Carroll, one of the better, cheaper acts in America today. And if you like this show, tell your friends. If not, please be quiet, because I need the business. But <laughs> give me a nice mic stand here. I'll steal the other one here. That's good. Hold me on professionalism here. No, no, talk amongst yourself while we're doing this here. Uh, there we go. All right. We hope that you'll enjoy this show. And uh, first of all, how many people are here tonight? Raise your hand. Usually get one or two, they don't know where the hell they are. Okay, here we go. Well, let's get right on to the tricky stuff. Right on to the junk called magic. Okay, how many people like card tricks? <laughs> Good, I brought a rope trick instead, so. Thank God for that. All right, here we have an ordinary piece of rope with two ends and a middle. And uh, you know when you used to go to school, well, sometimes you still have to tie your shoes in what is known as a shoelace knot. You run around and played all day when you were a kid and got it tangled up in what is known as this. Now, this is something you can never get out of. This is called a marriage knot. Unless, of course, you're a magician, you run your hand down like that, and, of course, the knot completely disappears. The other type of knot that everyone knows how to tie is an ordinary square knot, and tying a square knot is a simple thing to do. Unless, of course, you're a magician, you can make that completely disappear also. The hardest knot in the world to tie is a knot made famous by Mr. Will Rogers, who used to grab a piece of rope at one end, not grab the rope at the other, hit the rope somewhere in the center, and wind up with a knot in the middle. Can we have a drum roll? <laughs> Union guys, I love them. Okay, here we go. Wind up with a knot, just about, right about here. Wind up with a knot, just two out of three. No drummer, I can't do it. <laughs> here we go, three out of four. There it is, just like, how about that? Come on. If I was any good, I wouldn't be here. All right, now, moving right along. <laughs> we'll bring up both ends of the rope, bring up the middle, which is somewhere in between the two ends, and we'll cut the rope in the center, and hopefully wind up with two, and I mean two, perfectly even pieces of rope. Little premature trick. Okay, <laughs> stay there, or you'll get there later. <laughs> It's a hell of a finish. This is going to be a biggie. All right, now. Okay, we'll bring up all the ends of the rope, say the magic words abracadabra, presto changeo, and hocus pocus. And by magic, it's back to the way it was before, an ordinary piece of rope. Okay. Well, anyway, I always wondered what it would be like if we could actually get rid of the ends of the rope, because if we can get rid of the ends, we can also get rid of the middle. So we'll take the ends and throw them away. And now we have a piece of rope with no ends, no middle, no center, just one continuous piece of rope. <laughs> yeah, rolling now. But you don't even have to be a magician or to use any scissors. Just give it a karate chop right about there, and by magic, it's back to the way it was before, an ordinary piece of rope. Ta-da! Hey, this guy's dynamite! Okay, here's another trick you won't like. I got this trick from an old Chinese magician by the name of Hung Wan. His brother was Hung too. He had three Chinese virgins for daughters. Too young two, too dumb two, and no yen two. Now, here we have a black scarf that I've dyed white, and a white one that I've dyed black, and a little spotted can, as everyone can plainly see. Now we'll place the white one in, then the black one, say the magic words, hachi crachi, and by magic, the white one changes to black, and the black one changes to white. A miracle. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm my type of crowd, drunks. All right. We'll do it the hard way. As long as I keep my day job, I'm a salesman. I sell donuts to midgets for toilet seats. Now, we'll put both of them in at the same time, take the spots off, throw them inside the can, and we have one and two, and that's a little bit better. da -da! Hey, all right. $12 for that. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, let me get a jet. Sir, would you come up here and help me out for just a second? Yes, you, sir. Yes. Oh, well, you can? All right, come on up here, sir. Take your, she can. We're passing the buck. We'll get the assistant. Just a second. A little traveling music, please. <laughs> oh. 
Thank you for coming up here and uh, garnishing. Well, Jesus, tall guy, get over here. Okay, what's your name, sir? John. John? Because he's got a head like a toilet. Good. All right, now. It's a joke, John. <laughs> Don't get ticked off, John. Okay, big guy, face the audience. That's it. Look nervous. All right. Okay, what do you, what do you got in your pocket there? A flashlight? All right, now. <laughs> Little young stud. Come here, John. Okay, guys in a band, I can tell. All right, now. John, uh, what's your first name? John. That's right. All right. Just, just checking. Now, John, have you ever seen the amazing escape artist, Harry Houdini? What are you walking like John Wayne? Get over here. Whole thing all back up. All right, now, John, face the audience. Well, you're going to play the part of the amazing escape artist, Harry Houdini, for the next few minutes. Now, John, what I want you to do is I want you to examine these closely. If you will, there are thumb cuffs used by the FBI. You've heard of the FBI? My uncle's with the FBI. They picked them up last week. Now, John, what I want you to do is examine them. You'll notice it has a row of teeth on the bottom edge, and once placed inside here, it makes it impossible for anyone to make their escape. Because of the row of teeth on the bottom edge, it can severely injure your thumbs. Isn't this going to be fun, John? Uh, oh, find out. Well, let's find out. All right, John, here we go. All right, we'll just place them on you just like this, nice and tight. All right, now, John, let me just borrow your thumbs. Okay, now, here we go. Don't be nervous, John. All right, lock them on good and tight. Now, John, just so the audience can see how you make your escape, we're going to take this scarf and place them over your hands. And then at the count of three, John, you will miraculously make your escape. Are you ready, John? Okay, here we go. Okay, face the audience. Here we go. Stand him up. Another drum roll. Here we go. One, two, three. Thank you, John, for helping me out. You're, you're still in them. Right. Well, here's the key, John. All right. There you go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, even with the key, it's almost impossible. John, come over here. It's almost impossible to get out because the keyhole is on the other side. Now, we didn't do this to embarrass you, John, and you, uh, we just want to show that it is very difficult to get out of these, even if you had the key. So, John, we'll place the key down here. Now, John, we can place them on me this time, but we can do it one or two ways. Let me get the scarf back. We can do it in front of me or behind my back, whichever you prefer. One in front. Okay. Right. You want them on in front. Good, John. Is that what you said? Behind my back. I can't see it. A pain in the ass, John. Okay. <laughs> Good guy. Okay, John. No. All right. Make sure the keyhole is on the uh, facing the, the back here so I can't get it. Put them on as tight as possible, John, but don't draw blood, okay? All right. <laughs> Good. Thank you, John. Oh, okay. Good. Now, John, if you would, face. Uh, see where that spotlight is over there? There. Make sure it's around. Show the people it's locked. John, do you see the spotlight over there on the wall? Over there on the wall, John. They're locked, right, John? All right. Now, John, what I want you to do, face the audience. Turn around. We're going to try to get out of these. They're locked, aren't they, John? Yeah, they're locked. All right, now, John, we're going to try to get out of these just as quickly as you did. Now, see the, no, I want you to time me. You see the clock over there? That's where I want you to point. All right, and in just a second, John, we'll try to get out of these just a little bit faster than you did. Thank you, John, for helping me out. You were a great volunteer. Thank you, John. <laughs> Mr. Chopin's. Okay. Thanks, John. You're big help there. Okay. Now we have to, oh, let's see. One, oh, you know, in the future, everything that you own, your car, your clothes, and your possessions, by the 21st century, will be completely invisible. And we have something here from the future, and it's an invisible deck of cards. Let's see. Uh, the, the gentleman at this table back here, uh, would you just take this deck of cards, sir? Man in the white shirt there. You're a slow catch. Good. Would you shuffle up the cards? Take them out of the case first. Oh, look, I threw it to him, and the other guy's shuffling. Look at that. guy's drunker than I am. All right, now, <laughs> that's it. Would you take them out of the case first before you shuffle? That's good. All right, now would you fan them out and make sure they're all different? Are they all different? Yeah. You're looking at the backs, but that's okay. All right, the gentleman is laughing at you next to you. Would you take one card from his deck, show everybody else what it is, and I won't look. People from Henderson. All right, now, <laughs> would, you, <laughs> would you take, well, look at that card, show everybody else what it is, I won't look, all right? Okay, now would you put it back inside the deck, upside down? Upside down, going the other way. Sir, would you shuffle the cards back up there? Okay, and would you put them back inside the card case and throw them back up here? Very good. Now, the gentleman who picked the card, I'd like you to constipate on your card, if you will. Are you constipating? You are. Then you haven't eaten at IHOP yet. All right, now, for the very first time, what was the name of the card that you looked at? That's absolutely correct. Thank you very much. No, do you want to change your mind? The Ace of Spades. You don't want to change your mind. That's the one. All right. We'll take this deck of cards that's completely invisible, place them inside of this visible deck of cards. We'll go through here and see if we can find one card that is reversed. We'll place the joker down here. Now, before the show, I had reversed a card somewhere in this deck, and I didn't ask the gentleman to help me out beforehand. We'll go through here, find one card that is reversed, bring it to the front of the deck. The card that you turned over in the invisible deck was the Ace of Spades, and the card that I turned over before the show began was the Ace of Spades. Thank you very much. Glad you were here. 
I have to have one more assistant, so just a second here. Thank you, boys. Okay, then. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, 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 excuse me. Uh, will you come? Sure. Come on. Come on. Come on. Read this a bit. Sure. This is all right. <laughs> Holy gee, oh, this. All right, what's your name? Rosemary. Rosemary. Well, face the audience, Rosemary. Okay. <laughs> okay, Rosemary, uh, where are you from? Monterey. Where? Monterey. Monterey. Okay. <laughs> A little shy. Okay. Monterey, uh, uh, Rosemary, could you take your top off there? Please? No, no. <laughs> Well, I thought it was a little disco. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, Rosemary, I want you to face the audience. Put your feet together, your hands at your side, your chin up, and your chest out. Oh, okay, it's out. Well, must be outside. I don't know. Okay. But the Lord's forgotten we stuff with cotton. Is that your husband there? <laughs> He's going to kick my ass. All right, good. Okay, Rosemary. It's a joke. Okay. Just, here, just stand right here now. You're going to help me with the trick, and I want you to look at this thing closely. Okay, Rosemary? Go ahead and touch it. That's long enough. Now, I want you to whisper in my ear and take a guess at what you think this is. Take your time. This is the part I like. Good. No, Rosemary, come on. Take a guess. No, it's not a toilet seat. No, no. No indoor plumbing in the car. Oh. All right, I want you to hold the handle on that side. Hold the handle on the other side. What this is, Rosemary, is a balloon buster. Now, we're going to put a, a balloon in here. So. What I want you to do is just hold it just like that, all right, and just face the audience, because I'm going to show you something else, Rosemary, and I want you to think quickly and tell me what you think this is. A balloon. Close. All right. Well, something from Talk of the Town. All right, now. <laughs> well, something for quickies going down the hall, huh? Okay. And Rosemary, that's about the size of it. Now, what we're going to do, Rosemary, is we'll fold this little thing in half. A little, little kinky, little kinky. All right, now, we'll place it inside the stocks, just like this. Now, hold it just like that. Come over here, Rosemary. Okay, are you ready? Face the audience, because we have one more thing for the trick. <coughs> that's it. Because, Rosemary, that one more thing is this. Now we're going to take this sword, make it go down through the balloon, it'll go right through the balloon without popping it, and we'll have a great trick. Now won't that be a good trick, Rosemary? Say yes. I knew you would. <laughs> At the count of three, the sword will go through the balloon. Here we go. Hold it down just like that. Any guy got one in his wallet? Because I... <laughs> I know I can do this. All right, hey, Rosemary, come here. I know this can be done. You know, uh, Rosemary, somebody still got one last night. They came in, they had one since they were 13. Still had a little ring in the wallet. Uh, uh, it's a joke. All right, now what we're going to do is, uh, I'd like to try this trick, Rosemary, but I don't have any more balloons. And Rosemary, old buddy, old pal, what would be the next most obvious thing that I could put in here if I ran out of balloons? What? Not your neck. Close. OK, here we go. <laughs> It's going to be fun. I'll see you later, right? <laughs> he gave me 20 bucks to get you up here. All right, now. Okay, that's the last time you worked with the fifth dimension. Okay, now. Okay, Rosemary. All right, now there are two handles on this device. I want you to hold the handle on that side. Over here, I want you to reach up and grab your ear. That's right. If the head falls off, you'll be the first to know, all right? <laughs> no sense. Oh, now, you're not nervous, are you? Well, don't be nervous. I've never done this before either. No sense both of us worrying. All right, here, hold the handle instead, all right? Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Sometimes a little boring just standing up here, not doing anything while I'm doing all the stuff here. So I'll tell you what, we'll put this little newspaper down. <laughs> Give you a little something to read while we're in show business. <laughs> Don't worry, the trial doesn't come up <laughs> till tomorrow. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready, Rosemary? Now, Rosemary, I don't want to hurt you doing this, so if you feel anything at all at the back of your neck, I want you to let me know, and I'll stop the trick immediately. You will let me know. I'll be the first to know. Good. Okay, let's speak up, because I'm hard of hearing. Here we go. Ready? Let me know if you feel anything at all, and I'll stop the trick immediately. You 
feel this? What? You felt that? You're not supposed to. That's a good bucket. Don't throw up in it, all right? Rosemary, once we start the trick, we have to finish it. So here we go. Here we go. Are you ready, Rosemary? Just come a little closer over here. That's good. Okay. A little closer to the bucket right there. May we have a moment of silence now for my late assistant, Rosemary. <laughs> Were you one of the people who didn't like the spot trick? I think? Oh, you're good. I'm glad you did. Huh? Here you go. And the country! The sword will go through your neck. Are you ready, Marcia? In just a second, Rose Marie will feel the prick at the back of her neck. <laughs> Here we go. Are you ready, Rosemary? Here we go. You still feel this? Okay, here we go. Are you ready? What? <laughs> oh, look, now I think you wet your pants. Closer. Here we go. Are you ready? One, two, three! What a rough neck. I've heard of deep throat, but this is ridiculous. What? The new sequel, Sore Throat. Turn sideways, Rosemary. Ooh, all right. Give Rosemary a nice round of applause here. She's a brave. Are you all right? All right, good. So, Rosemary, we have to take the sword out. That's the hard part of the trick. Hold the handles. Here we go. Out comes the sword. Oh. Page two. Okay, here we go. Don't just go dance now. <laughs> out comes the sword and off comes the stocks. And Rosemary, all this applause is for you. Thank you, Rosemary, for helping us. You are very brave, Rosemary. Very brave. Well, uh, this thing has been driving me nuts for the show here, so let me just get rid of it. Just a second here. Uh, Band could help me out a little, a little traveling music now. Uh, whatever, my. Whoops, wait a second. Hey, okay. I got it. Might not be too funny to you people, but a grown man putting this rope through his pants before the show is kind of nuts in the men's.